Okay, my name is Jim Martin. I'm chair of the Department of Surgery at the University of Toronto. By training, I'm a pediatric neurosurgeon. I work at uh, Sick Kids Hospital. Good. And you've been involved in uh, various global surgery uh, endeavors throughout your career. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I became uh, particularly interested in global surgery when I became chair of the Department of Surgery. We have a pretty ambitious strategic plan in the Department of Surgery. We have a number of pillars of excellence, including education, research, uh, faculty development, best practices. But something we were lacking was global surgery. So I, I took that on as an initiative when I became chair of the Department of Surgery. And since that time, it uh, dovetailed nicely with a personal interest of mine in uh, doing global surgery in a country of need, and that country was Ukraine. And the. <coughs> There are about um, 35 surgeons that go on different missions around, and we have yet to collate them into a, a group. To mm. and, and that global now there's a new types of positions for a uh, stream of global surgery as an academic endeavor. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. So for the very first time, we've enabled surgeons in our faculty to go forward for promotion on the basis of global surgery. And as far as I know, we're one of the few departments in North America that has enabled surgeons to do this as a, as a stream towards uh, promotion. And I was really pleased that now we have uh, about five surgeons who have um, adapted this particular job description to go forward in their academic careers towards promotion. What do you think of some of the positives or if there's negatives uh, to, to going on a global surgery, surgery project around the world? Well, I didn't really know what it was all about until I started doing it, and uh, for me it's been about five years now that I've been going to Ukraine. And I must say, now that I'm doing it, and I've been actively involved in this particular mission to Ukraine, it's something I wish I had started uh, 25 years ago, but um, it is what it is. We have established um, a program now that uh, takes us to Ukraine, but it's been fantastic. It's been wonderful. It's been uh, really uh, fulfilling for me. Uh, very gratifying to be involved in this particular uh, project and mission with my colleagues um, and so it's been something that uh, I look forward to doing not only now five years from now but I can see myself doing this as I transition in my career uh, out of surgery where I can serve as a mentor, educator, even a teacher um, on this mission uh, well into uh, my uh, future career as, uh, as a surgeon. We hear uh, frequently how rewarding it is that you're a scientist as well as a surgeon. What about the metrics of uh, getting information or research uh, projects? Yeah, it's always difficult to measure what your impact is in global surgery around the world. And uh, you know the traditional metrics of um, how we measure things at universities, which include uh, grant capture, for example, or publications, don't always hold or aren't always possible to show when it comes to global surgery. Uh, that being said, for my own uh, personal mission to Ukraine, I'm pleased to report to you uh, that uh, we've just looked at our first five-year experience and we've uh, written this up for publication. It's been accepted now and it's going to be published in a journal called World Neurosurgery um, as our first publication um, that demonstrates the impact that we're having because we've been uh, not only measuring what we're doing in Ukraine when we go there, but we also invite Ukrainian uh, neurosurgeons to come to Canada, to Toronto, to Sick Kids Hospital to train with us, to observe around us, and to take back what they've learned to their countries and to do better uh, with skill sets that they didn't have previously. That may go to one of the buzzwords that you hear a lot in global surgery literature and, and different conferences, and that is sustainability. How, what's your view on how we can sustain or make a mark that's lasting? Yeah, sustainability is also a, uh, a tough aspect of global surgery to uh, to measure and also to take forward. And so uh, in our uh, particular case with our um, uh, fellowship program that we've organized at Sick Kids Hospital that goes uh, to Ukraine on an annual basis, uh, we've been emboldened to do our work by virtue of um, a couple of funds that we've been able to raise money for and to support uh, the sustainability. One is to enable the travel of uh, Ukrainian surgeons and professionals to come to uh, Canada, to Toronto, to train with us at, uh, in this case, Sick Kids Hospital. Uh, but also it enables us to go there and while we're there to do teaching and education and um, 
our goal is not to go to Ukraine and, and do lots of surgery uh, because we think that's uh, kind of counter productive, but rather we go there to teach them how to do uh, these cases, uh, teach them in the clinic, um, help them with their consultation process, and, uh, and provide, as I said, lectures uh, to them so that they can actually learn uh, from us, from our experience. Um, but we think the bilateral exchange, having them come to Toronto and us uh, going there, is uh, extremely important. So that's one thing. The second thing that we do is uh, we have an equipment fund that has been established uh, through the uh, generosity of Jim Temerty um, that is enabling us to deposit equipment and various um, forms of neurosurgical instrumentation to various centers in Ukraine. So already we've been able to um, plant two operative microscopes uh, in two different cities in Ukraine. Uh, we've uh, been giving them um, intraoperative ultrasound uh, equipment. Uh, for one center, we provided an entire uh, operating room uh, table and its attachments, which is really important for uh, neurosurgery. Prior to that, they were using an obstetrics and gynecology table, which is totally you know, wrong and inappropriate um, for the types of cases that neurosurgeons do. So uh, all these things combined lead to an effort that um, we hope will be sustainable. The funds that we have are endowed funds and the um, interest uh, that's paid out each year uh, in, to a degree will help with the sustainability. But probably the most important thing is um, having the personnel that are interested in doing the mission. That's more important than any kind of endowed funds. If you don't have the personal commitment, uh, you'll never have a sustainable program. For our students and our residents here, what do you think the, uh, the advantages or the benefits for them to go on one of these missions would be? Yeah, so for our students and residents to get them involved in projects like this, I think is extremely important. Uh, it's a little complicated because uh, it does take time away from them being in their own clinical streams in the University of Toronto. However, we think it's really important to, to open their eyes, to open their horizons and avenues of, um, of future endeavors for them. We're hoping that many of them, if they latch onto projects in global surgery early in their careers like this, as, when they're students, that future uh, opportunities will arise for them and that they'll continue to do this long throughout their careers and, and thereby uh, build momentum that many more students will latch onto. Uh, for our own particular project in Ukraine, what we've been doing is um, inviting our fellows. So these are you know, senior trainees to come to Ukraine. And so far that's worked out really well, but I'm looking forward to an opportunity also to bring residents and perhaps uh, one day some medical students with us as well. The Lancet has defined the number of principals in their commission on global surgery. And those